Who's your daddy, bitch? Oh, you live. You live. Yes! Next, please. This is the final episode of Love Life. So, nothing more fitting than bringing in the, getting the band back together. Sure. Bringing in the great Anna Corolla. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm really honored to uh, be back. I really am because I, you know, I was thinking about this. I got to leave and say goodbye once already. So this is kind of your show to yeah. say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everyone's show to say goodbye to Love Life. Yeah, but uh, I appreciate you being here to be part of that. Sure, yeah, no problem at all. Emily Morris, Sex Emily, still here with us. Hi. Hi. Good to see you, Adam. It's good to see you, Emily. Um, I, uh, you know, th- this this show is such an institution. I mean, because we all listen to it. I listened to you for many, many years before I yeah. was ever chosen to co-host this show. Which is weird. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's the equivalent to growing up in New York and then playing shortstop for the Yankees. Wow. For, for me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, to me, this is in, in a, you know, in a world of 20 years of show business, this has always been the best gig. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's well, profound. Well, here's how you know. Here's how you know, because <laughs> everybody else starts off in radio or starts off doing whatever they're doing. And then the second they have some success in TV, they leave it. Just like their first wife. <laughs> Boom. It's gone. No, you know you know what I'm saying? You leave your hometown. Yeah, right. You leave your... I had a million TV show jobs and never stopped doing Love Line. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, pe- never thought about that, but I'm the same way. It's true. And people would say all the time, like, oh, okay, so how do we know you're not coming back or whatever? And I go, I- I'm doing three jobs during the day already. I just come here <laughs> at night. At night, yeah. Yeah, it's weird, right? Did you well, ever... I think it's because we genuinely enjoyed it yeah and right. and each other's company yeah yeah in fact adam and i had a weird habit of uh as soon as first of all we would talk to each other into the bathrooms pee next to each other oh that's sweet. right get coffee yeah. together yeah. and and uh walk away back talking and then when we got in our cars at night we would call each other oh my yeah. god it's, it's like bffs no it's, it's cute what it's straight you, out gay. would you like down, no, straight yeah. out gay. but drew loves his bromances like that's well, his thing and Listen, you were like his I, first bromance, I think. I would always tell Which everyone. Is kind of a big he broke moment. my behind, but it's true. You broke him, but now you're back. <laughs> I took it. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of. That would be an interesting reveal. I, uh, you know, I'd always say to people, look, the the best flight you could ever take would just be sitting next to Drew on an airplane. Like that'd be the coolest conversation you could ever have. And then I got to do it every night, and I was just treated uh, for good or for bad the uh, microphone like an intercom. Yeah. And we were just talking back and forth, too. And I was, I was constantly pleaded with to roll more phone calls. But I, I thought, man, I'd rather hear me and Drew. So the and great news, Adam, is we get the band back together and go right. and do a podcast. Yeah, we're going to do a podcast at uh, AdamCroll.com. And it's like, it's one of these things where I've, I've always said this. I, I think radio is a much deeper connection than TV shows and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, you know, people enjoyed... Love line on MTV, or they like the Man Show, or Crank right. Anchors, or something. But when it goes away, that it doesn't hurt them. They just go, ah, that was a good show. Whatever right. happened to that show? You know, the same mm-hmm. way you think about Mash or All in the Family or something like that. You know, you go, ah, that was a good show. Gracie but... Allen and George Burns. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, my mother, the car. <laughs> We're dating Drew, but what, what I'm saying is, is like you go, ah, oh, yeah, was, uh, I miss that show. But 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 the. As far as the sonic stuff goes, like yeah. radio, you, f- you you miss it. Yeah, right. I mean, you feel like, oh well, we had we had a relationship. No, for, and, I mean, you you guys, so many lives, you guys touch. People call in every single night, like that was the, the MTV. Someone called in last night and said, "Dude, do you remember that you were on MTV?" But it's I like, I mean, Pete, you, you guys know how many lives you impacted. But I love the story of how you guys met and that you just instantly okay, chemistry. So, it's almost so, like love at first sight, which I've actually heard heard about. Would well, I want to hear it too. I just, uh, just let me finish this thought and say, Please. radio and the spoken word is a relationship, and when that thing ends, there's a, a hole, an emptiness right. for a lot of people. Yeah. And I said the same thing I, I said to everyone when I stopped doing my terrestrial radio show, which is, if you want to find me, I will be out there on the internet. You can find and me. And you if did not, it in five minutes. Fine. So you went to Adam Coral, and then it became the number one. Like, because I was on the station at Free FM, but it was like I was a little tiny nut. You were syndicated, and then like within five minutes, you like started podcasting, and then it was like it was barely a transition people had to make. Right, but. 
but they didn't have to miss you for my, long. You knew how to do that. My point is, like your huggy bookie, we will be out there. We'll be, yeah, you, I'm, I'm, I'm be out there. We'll be All out right. there at Amadou Show. Show. How did we meet? We <laughs> met because uh, you were doing Mr. Bertram on the morning show here on Kevin and Bean. Yes. Uh, Everyone knows Bertram, right? I don't have to def- describe him. I don't him know if I did. He's oh. a character. Well, was a he's the, he was a wood shop teacher. People know him from Crank Anchors, yeah. too. Yeah. And, but uh, he was a character. He came about. Well, now I've. Jimmy Kimmel told me, come up with a character, call in as a character. Can you do him a little for a second? I mean, it's basically me just yelling <laughs> about wood. <laughs> okay, just, just want to get. Just l- listen to Context. on the house. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got to basically, though. What do we got to uh, do? Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're such a pussy. Hit it, dude. Come on. What are you doing? I did. Come on, bro. No, you're like being scared of the, the basically. No, I'm just no, a staple. No, not. Anderson. All right. It's a staple, though. Yeah. Relax, everybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> y- you were doing that, that character, and I was thought it was hysterical. And they actually gave you a shift on Saturdays, right? Yes. And I used to turn to uh, time my nursing home rounds with uh, his breaks, so I could hear Bertram talking to some of these young callers. Cause it was pretty funny. And uh, and then you came up as Bertram on Love Line, or were you? Yes. you? Yeah, I, I did a, an entire episode in character <laughs> on Love Line <laughs> as Bertram. And uh, and then uh, we... not as funny as when the Aquabats stayed in character <laughs> to do the Love Line show in 1998. That was hysterical, what, what but you... almost as good as that. <laughs> and uh, we, some TV producers showed up and announced they were going to do a show, and they were just going to do it. Whoever wanted to come along, go ahead. And I was like, All right, interesting. And Ricky said no. And uh, they went, who, who was who co-host now? I was like, I have no idea. And I was out running one day. I could show you the spot I was in. I thought of Adam. I thought, what if that guy that does birch? I, I bet that he guy could like do this. like a vision of you while yeah. jogging through yes. Pasadena. Yes. Yeah. Did you know this? Yeah, well. I'm sure. We'll I didn't know it intuitively, but right. <laughs> at a certain you know point story, when he told me. I was kind of amazed. And then you went to MTV. And then you met for five. Okay. I know that I paraphrase it, but. The story is that, as you told me, we we went we went to the we I they they tested us. They put us in a makeup booth and <laughs> said, "Work your relationship out. We'll start filming in a couple hours." Yeah, no, the comedy that you forget about that story is is I was in New York with my other yes. lover Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> and our other partners Kevin and Bean, and it was once a year we went to New York for the MTV Music Awards, yeah. and it was a big deal. Ironic, it was MTV. And it was like, oh, my God, we're in New York. They're flying us Tower Air. They're <laughs> buying the tickets and coach. We get to stay at this something, something you that's now diem? torn down now. It's probably like $4 a day, but I was using the phone inside the room, and I racked up like $48 a day because I had no idea. what I, I didn't, I'd never left North Hollywood, but it was me and Jimmy, and we're going to go to Little Italy, and we're going to all the hot spots, and it was like a romantic getaway. And I got there, and about two days after I got there, they said, you have to come back. You have to audition for this Love Line, the TV show. And I said, I've been on a few auditions. It never works out. As a matter of fact, I had somebody complain to William Morris that I was verbally abusive oh. at an audition. <laughs> it, was, it was a casting. These guys are colossal <laughs> pussies. They're used to having their ass kissed. But anyway, so I said, this is not going to work. And what you're going to do is you're going to fly me back to L.A. I'm going to not get the gig. And then I'm going to be back in L.A. and everyone else is in New York for the MTV Awards and Little Italy. Yes, and Gelato. And (laughs) so I I really said, like, look, I'm not going to get it. Let me stay. And they said, get on the first plane and come back. And I said to them as sort of half a joke, why don't you get Mark DiCarlo? He's, you know, he hosted Studs. He's about to write Demo. Get that guy. He's a host. He's an Italian guy. He's a paisan. Paisan. Get Mark DiCarlo, I laughed. And they said, stop it. Knock it off. Get back here. And we showed up to Hollywood Center Studios like two days later where we ended up shooting The Man Show as well as Crank Anchors as well as Loveline. And they put us in the, just a little empty soundstage. Weird, empty. They get really empty when they're empty, like when there's right. no sets or bleachers or people or anything. They just set us down, put us at like a folding table, yeah. folding no, chairs. They, they were behind a folding table, right? And it, we were like up in chairs in front. They like put a fake phone between yeah. us or something. And they started just saying like, hi, you know, I'm Becky, I'm 16, I'm Herbie's, you know. And we just sort of did our thing. And it, it actually went pretty good, like. And the reason it went pretty good is because I'd been listening to Loveline and Drew for so many years that I felt like I knew you, even if you didn't. We hadn't worked together. I'd been, 
I was building a gymnasium and I could only build at night because the gymnasium was open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I'd roll in at 10 p.m. and turn Loveline on and listen to you and Ricky Rackman and just listen to the whole thing. And I knew the I knew your rhythm. Yeah. So I aced it and I thought, well, this is awesome. Maybe I did get this gig. And we're, they said, that was great. We'll let you know tonight. We'll call you tonight. And it was a pitch black, big sound stage with the door shut. It was bright outside, you know, Remember middle of the like, day. Adam, 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 great job. Great. Drew, we got, we got to talk to you about something. Drew, come over here. For a yeah, Drew, hang back. We just want to get a couple <laughs> of official particulars from you. Adam, awesome. Knocked it out of the ballpark. We'll awesome job. <laughs> and I started to leave this huge black sound stage, and I was pushing the door open to get out. There's no windows or anything in the place, so it's pitch black. And as I was pushing the door it pulled open for me so someone on the outside <laughs> pulled it open the door flung open it was a shaft of light and a huge jufro and it was me bumping into mark de carlo <laughs> coming Bump, in to be tested next to be tested oh. next and i remember like thinking why oh, did they listen to me like they must have listened to me this is too random back in LA. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. And then, you th heard, but... then you thought oh damn but that was that was it but you said it was 12 hour day so that was it. So then we went the week later. The four days later, they put us in a makeup booth. They got, they hired him. They said, we'll work our relationship. We did like a nine hour shoot. Remember the stage manager came up to us towards the end of the day and went, how many years you guys been working together? How'd you figure this right. out? Remember this that? This is what yes. I'm saying. We that doesn't happen. No. How long does it take to find someone that you could really work with together? Especially on the radio. Well, with so me, I can fake it, but with Drew, <laughs> really no. quickly, Adam, I have somebody that gave you a gift that was one of the greatest gifts of your life. Ooh. John from System of a Down. Oh. And you know that gift. <laughs> sure. John, are you there? Yeah, hey, guys. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I got up and left the show and drove to Van Nuys to go to John's house. He and I had a conversation that you didn't just drive to Van Nuys. You drove to Van Nuys and he said once you grabbed the Taboo 2 DVR, DVD or VCR maybe. Oh, he said it was like it was a cartoon. Real to real. It was like a cartoon with a puff of smoke. Poof, for you out. Oh, I'm I running have, home. I may have asked I've never him seen how somebody they... leave my house that fast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how you doing, John? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's been a long time. I remember yeah, when we yeah. first heard System of a Down. When we were uh, doing a K Rock calendar signing at like a Best parking buy. lot at Best, Buy, Best buy. and you guys were playing. And then later on, my favorite system of a down story is when we all decided to go out and get some uh, Armenian food, right? At the carousel. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Carousel in Glendale. Now, <laughs> no, it, wait, Glendale, you're <laughs> kidding me. Am I making this up, John? When you guys walked in and it was like system of a down at the height of their powers coming into our Armenian restaurant, you guys were as big a celebrities as they had in that place. We all walked in. Everyone said, like, you got to try this, that, one, sandwich. this one sandwich appetizer. <laughs> yeah. And they said, no, take out the only. And they were like, well, just bring it to the table. No. And we're like, yeah. we'll just, I mean, we can eat it in the parking lot. They're like, you do what you want, but you can't have it here. And we're like, could you just bring us around to the table? And they're like, no. That's well, when I realized. how embarrassed I was. I, we, you know, we know. We, I we, talked we, about our, that sandwich. I talked about that sandwich as much as you and I talked about Taboo 2. For some oh. reason, we constantly talk about it. But you, you, you we constantly. finally get there, and I'm trying to impress you guys with the Armenian food and everything. And and uh, and really, if we just had that sandwich, we didn't have to have anything else. <laughs> but famous John. for that sandwich, and they would not bring it to the table. I think I had to go back and talk to the chef. I remember you and, running back to the kitchen and yelling at them. Well, I told him, I told him, why are you embarrassing me? <laughs> Yeah. In like, Armenian. I, it was all in Armenian. Wow. Yeah, so, like, I right, think John, we got the sandwiches, though, right? That's we did. Point. We eventually got them right. in the bag. But, uh, John, we got to go to break. But, uh, dude, it's good to talk to you. And to I thank just wanted to congratulate you guys. You had a great run. I love doing the show every time I was on, and uh, I will miss it. But I'm sure I'll see you guys. You got it. Thanks, John. Come on, John. Take care. All right. Take care. 800-LOVE-191 <laughs> -E is the number. It is Love Line. It is the final show. Adam Kroll in here for the, getting the band back together in this final episode. Emily Morris from Sex and Emily. Be right back. No, cannot have. No, cannot have. Try this beverage. It's goat-based. No, cannot have. No, cannot have. No, cannot have. No, no, no.
You cannot have. No, no mixing. No, cannot have. Read menu. No, no, get, get fired. No. 1-800-L-O-B-E-191. No one else can find the trouble so quickly or repair it so economically. Bloodline is coming back. Loveline on K-Rock. Broadcast over any FM car radio. Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. K-Rock. Loveline on K-Rock. Loveline on K-Rock. Bye-bye. What's this now, Anderson? New music. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Last episode of Loveline. Many special guests coming. Bye, right now bye. we have from Lincoln Park, Mike Schnoda. Mike. Hello. How are you, buddy? Hi, Mike. Hi, Hi Mike. guys. Thank you for joining us on the Swan Song. Oh, man. So sad to see you guys go. Hmm. Mm. Really? Well, you know what's really b- bizarre about this show? It has such crazy, far-reaching tentacles. There's yeah. so many people I talk to that are like, oh, I used to listen all the time. You- and it's like, you? What? <laughs> I mean, before you, guys, you were you, yeah. before many people were who they are now, they're like, oh, when I was in high school, we know Oh, yeah, says. absolutely. And and I was trying, I was just now, as you guys were talking to John, I was um, on Twitter trying to get a uh, uh, account for how many times i've been on the show um i i can't get a i mean i don't know what it is i think it's like more than 10 maybe more yeah. than 15 yeah. times it's like four, between 14 and 17 something like that somewhere around, around there i mean it's like, like i was on there i mean i think you guys are the only show that i did with my wife anna yes that's like true. we i don't we didn't we never do that but we were like we you know, we got the opportunity to go on with you guys when her book came out. And yes. it was like, you know, of course we'd do that. It was awesome. Well, buddy, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. It's a, it's a big night, so we're just going to kind of, you know, hang You're out. You're not going to oh, I was going to add a question, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it. it's okay. It's oh, okay. Come on. You can talk about your penis. <laughs> We're totally down with that. It's got this, Mike, would you get the stoner laugh? <laughs> Smoking copious amounts of weed on a regular basis. That's, that's you where it. you get the stoner laugh. Good to uh, talk to you, All right, Mike. Mike. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. No doubt. We also have a very special guest in the house. Is she around here? Andy going to bring in our special guest? We'll keep talking in the meantime. There's a lot of exciting There's a lot going of special on here. Like, can but we somebody, just talk about somebody it? Somebody showed up on us. Drew, right? this was the best gig, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, this never felt like work for a second, did it? No. And what was extra fun was meeting the different celebrities and stuff every night and getting to know people and uh, really seeing the, sort of a different side of them than they would normally do when they're out sort of peddling their stuff. But what, what people need to understand is show business comes down to work at a certain point. Like, you yeah. know, everyone that was like, oh, oh, uh, man show, you and Jimmy chugging beer, trampoline, chicks everywhere. Uh-huh. It's like, no, in an office most days, writing most days, sitting in an edit bay most days. You know, it's a lot of work. Look this at this. never, look at this, look at this. this never was. Look at this. Oh. Yes. Well, there's time. Come here. here she <laughs> Could comes. Not be. Kathy Could not Griffin. Be. We're going to do something called, we're going to get a pickup tonight. Now, in show business, that means the show will go on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Yay. Griffin has never sat on my lap before after all these years. We are Kathy spooning. City, we're spooning. This is a little more than spooning, I think. I, I, believe I feel my, wood, and I, I yeah, don't want to make you do that character, but if you feel inspired, I heard you <laughs> fighting on the way here. Poplar, birch, uh, pine, alder. I feel all of them right behind me. Oh, you, got, you got red oak, you got white oak. Look out for the black stuff. As soon as it's parole, it's coming after you. Yeah, Kat, Kathy and I have known each other since before Since you were a carpenter. This. I know You that. were an actual carpenter. Yes. Yes. How weird is this? First Where of all, I would have uh, used to you like practically crying. I mean, I would come on this show thinking I would get jokes in, and then everybody calling would be wanting to die. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> and I would give Drew this look, and he'd, be, he'd give me this, like, don't, no, not, not time for a joke. Not time. <laughs> I'm calling from a bridge, and I'd be like, again, another teenager calling from a bridge. And then Drew would talk them off the ledge. How nice literally. is it Kathy came in? How cool That's, is that? I it made is, the drive. I'm in here in makeup. Yeah. I made the drive. Yeah. I'm I'm fully, a, you're fully done up. I am you're, you're, fully, you're fully in, in hair and makeup. Channel yeah. 5 is here, you guys. This is a big deal. <laughs> this is second only to the tear gas being distur- bis- dispersed at the Trump rally in Costa Mesa. What? At the fairgrounds. I missed that for this. There's a little tear <laughs> gas over a tear gas at the fairgrounds. Now, I'll be at the Thousand Oaks uh, Performing Arts Center a week from Friday. Oh. 
Well, when I come on Love Line, I also plug the show. Let's go right? yeah, yeah, I plug the tour. Really right. Why not? All right. Are you guys, have you saved any uh, Love Lives? Not tonight? yet. We haven't had a chance to go to no, I haven't saved what any happened? babies. But I came to your last show at the uh, Mark Taper. Oh, see? You were the one straight guy there. Okay, That's you know awesome. what? Nothing has changed. All these years, this guy still. All right, what should I do? Should I be available if you need, like, the, a feminine voice? Yeah. Or? Well, I, I sometimes call? I talk really okay, deep. Come sit by Emily. It's it's fun. Fun. No, this is good. I, like this is a blast. I'd like to help the youth. Yo, we, okay. we need you to help, help have a seat. Really yeah. Okay. Well, not really. Let's go but to Kathy. There. Kathy, take that one. <laughs> well, we never did. What? Well, it was I this. We were helping team. Like when I started doing the show, it would be Drew saying things like, "Just try a condom." <laughs> <laughs> it still feels good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Use the dental dam. You won't right. notice the oh, difference. Oh, like, nobody's this is, ever used dental dam. Wait, I've got dam. a perfect call for, okay, for perfect. Kathy. Here we go. Here this is Rebecca. So. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Go right ahead. Oh my God! I get to talk to Kathy Griffin too. Yo, we got. If we gave her some headsets, hold on a second. We got, we got. I don't have the cans. <laughs> Let me get the cans. Hold on. You, but you do. But we're gonna get you, but hold on one okay. second. We're we're only professional okay. show here. All right, I'll I'll, this is a great pilot. I'll pass along. <laughs> this is a great I'll pass pilot. along whatever the question is. <laughs> okay, Rebecca, Adam's gonna parrot whatever you say. So go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I first I just have to say I love you guys. I've been watching your show since I was in college. She's a morbidly obese lesbian. <laughs> Adam already. I, I, no. Too soon. I discovered podcast one about six months ago, and I couldn't believe Love Live was still on, and I listened to it constantly. So I always wanted to call in, and I figured I have to. Because it's the last show. Yep. So here's my question. Um, I got sober like three and a half years ago. Took a long break from dating. And when I got back on, I decided to do a dating site. I'm 49. I get so many messages from 22-year-old guys. What's up with that? Kathy? Okay, this is my area of expertise. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, sorry, I think they went to the mic. Tell me why. Sorry, there. I happen to be a professional in this area. So oh, my cougar, professional cougar? I'm a professional cougar. My uh, boyfriend like of five years, yeah. he's, yes, he's here. Oh, he's, right. uh, I'm 55, he's 37. Mm -hmm. Zip it. No, hey, hey, you know what? Stop. Do not judge. Do, no, do not, judge. cannot. Do not even exhale. It's the way it should be because guys die younger anyway. That's right. You and you know what? The Here's day. the thing, honey. I look. I if I could be Three graphic, I'm sore right now. Oh, oh really? Yes. Really? It's, really? It is a sweet, sweet sore. I heard you talking to Howard. You said at least I, uh, every I day. Every much. day, yeah. he's very young. Wakes up at the pub tent. Cobweb. Yeah, just, just you know, just have some Cipro nearby. Am I right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Drew, yeah. Drew is a professional nurse. That's for the recurrent he really ear knows infections. the uh -huh. business. Okay. And it's a small price to pay. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a, that's for right. great sex. As, as long it. as, you know, everyone is legal, I think I'm all for it. So are you asking why so many young guys are into women your age, Rebecca? I don't understand. I mean, they're really young, and I kind of, I find it a little disturbing, like 20, 21. It's just like a new phenomenon, though. I mean, I think that that's now... What I mean, oh, I love they've it. They've always wanted it. Yes. Yes, Drew, no, they've always wanted it. Then what's the... What's the no, the, the, they always want to bang. They don't want to marry you. You're, Kathy, you're, you're, you're redlining, baby. They want to fuck with you. In the motor racing parlance, you're banging against the red line. Yeah. That's where Literally. it is right now. It's time to shift into like a 44-year-old. But... Uh, <laughs> The, the, well, I think what's going on now is that women are saying yes. I think men always wanted to have sex with right. whomever would have sex with them, and now also, there's a bunch of women saying fine. Forty four five year old woman looks twenty eight these days that, that's too. Right. There's that, and there's also I, there's something a little weird going on with the young males too. <laughs> They're preoccupied. Let me make my they've pitch. seen some porn, you know. They've seen porn and two cougar porn sites and stuff. Well, they I think always say they want people to don't do. want to attach as quickly. They're not looking for relationships. Yeah, I think I can get sexual experience uh, with this sexy okay, woman who knows right, everything. You Teach me how to Emily's do stuff. Right? That's Teach right. me how if to you get down. Get, if, you, if you can get what I like to call a Kathy Griffin, you should. You should just right. grab her and just hold her down. But tell me, what, what do you, but are they looking to learn? What have you taught them? Giving him. Examples. What I have found is that younger guys tend not to be sexist. Guys my own age don't get it. I'm a chick comic. I'm working to male. They don't quite. Right. But the younger guys threatened. didn't really grow up with that sexist thing. Right. And you can bring in toys. But can we talk like, about uh, like, we a, love toys. like a stroke cane. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, like I'm a flashlight? Sorry? You mean like a hurricane a or a, or a hover-around? I hear a flashlight. When, when we get it on Thank on the hover-around, it is so <laughs> unique and different. And a it's what? why a hover-around or a rascal. And mm. when I, as long as I have my life alert, I am yeah. good to go. Yeah. But, but like, yeah. you feel like you're teaching the, a, Wait, Emily can hook that rascal up with a oh, Sibian. I have, every, I have a Sibian, Sibian in my living room. But really? it, it's yeah. in the Ottomans. You can't really test like a leather. You can't tell. But it's awesome. Do you, yeah. It's fantastic. Here's my question, though. Does he, like... Do you feel like you're always directing? Like, what do you think you, one thing you've specifically taught him they might not have known had he not been with you? I would say that his abilities in the... <laughs> <laughs> we talk a lot about the history 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
saying that's because of me. No, and but there's or no other show. You're implying it's because of me. I though. certainly thank no, you. No, the there is no the other lines. show. <laughs> Tell me if there's been another show like that. It's well, not I'm just saying anymore. historically, it's, it's never going to come up Ever. again where everybody just knows the show. It's, yeah. a, it's a weird. Well, also thing. when Loveline got started, radio had a much more powerful impact on young people, particularly. We'd, we'd gather around radio, mm-hmm. and radio culture determined, you know, where we went, and what we did, and there was, you know, it would carry their radio. And with you them. could listen to it separately from your mom and dad. Yeah. Right. There was a master yeah. blaster in your car, under the covers, yes. That's right. Chris, what did you learn? What a was your, what, what was the favorite color? A what in your car? Master blaster. A master blaster? <laughs> Sometimes I get hashtag really urban. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will go grandmaster flash on your butt so fast. <laughs> Chris, what did, what did learn? you learn from the show? What was your favorite call? Well, I, you know, favorite is a, is a weird word to use. Like, the most interesting would always be that people would call and they would have these these kind of complex they were dealing with. They'd call and they'd go, yeah, hey, uh, Dr. Drew, um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, during sex, I kind of like it when someone sticks a spatula in my ass and then twists it around and smacks me in the face with a with an oven mitt. I don't know why. And you go, well, you know, did anything happen to you when you were younger? No, I'm you know, totally all alive. Everything, are you sure nothing happened? No. Are you sure nothing happened? I swear nothing happened. I mean, you know, one time my uncle fingered me. I don't think that could be it. Like, I don't know what happened. I was raped you know, by like, Chef was... Boyardee, but <laughs> yeah. that, nothing yeah. out of the usual. Yeah, the, uh, the, the hamburger helper made, made a fist, and then he called him. <laughs> but I don't know if that could be it. Do you think that could be it? <laughs> so it was always people never realizing, like, they would always just casually mention these very earth-shattering things. Yeah. It always... And I would always, I, Drew would always look to me. You could see it in his eyes, and people never saw it. But I could see in his eyes and be like, okay, I know what this is about. And it was just, you know, the the wisdom. But you guys legitimately helped people say things out loud and be there before there was an Internet and talk, let people talk about things without fear of judgment and being weird. I mean, it was nighttime therapy for a, a couple of generations. I mean, it was such a it was such a magical wonderful thing that you did that you didn't have to do. Thanks, Chris. Again, once again, a great compliment. It's oh, a couple, couple of generations. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think the, as I was thinking about it on the ride in that I think part of the uh, success or allure of Love Line is we and nobody around here ever really knew what it was while it was, you yeah. know. So uh, Drew never got a big head. I never got a big head. Nobody ever really even knew what we were doing or the impact we're having or even, I mean, we understood the show was popular, but it just felt like, now you're doing a radio show, so people listen to the radio show. I I don't think we ever had a, like, pinch me moment or, oh my God, can you believe what we're doing here? It was morely when people like Kathy would come in, you go, this is so exciting, because Kathy comes in, and so it would elevate it, it'd be a lot of fun then, right? Yeah, not Kathy, but people like Kathy. Someone could ever get a Kathy Griffin. Yeah, like a Tina Fey or something. And somebody really with juice, somebody with juice. Right. Um, But no, as a a guest when I would come in, it would be so interesting because it was such a high wire act of trying to be funny and also listening to people with these serious problems. And Chris, you're so right. Drew has that look, which is the like, stop joking now. Now it's going to get very real. And then he has this look that just says trauma. Like the person's had yeah. trauma, trauma. They don't know what trauma. They've se- severe, uh, suffered trauma. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think people forget a time when, you know, when the Internet wasn't so pervasive and there weren't a million podcasts. And it was, you know, and also content wise, you guys were talking about things in a very casual manner and kind of demystifying it a lot and humanizing it when, that you couldn't talk about sex openly on television, you know. It was a, it just a, it was it was such a unique moment in time and and such a such a rare thing. But uh, I, it will be greatly missed. I'm just thinking, just to keep things alive, it ought to be Adam, me, and Kathy on your game show, Chris. That would be a. That would oh, you be guys, a, right? you guys should absolutely we'll be there. come on. All right, we're you done. absolutely should come on. If they ever ask us, I guess we will. I'm there. I'm actually there. Thanks, Chris. I'm asking you. you. I'm asking you. We're in. We shall do it. We're in, Hardwick. Thanks, Chris. Talk to you soon. Don't worry. It's all good. Can I just ask one question? Yeah. Do you have, what is one specific memory that you have of one thing that just kind of like stuck with you when you went home and for years? Like, do you have a particular memory to you that you go, Oh, and then, but then that guy called and completely blew me away. It wasn't so much calls; it was sort of what would happen in the studio. Would you say like Poo Poo City was pretty much Trump's eyes fell out of me? Fletcher actually called in last night. Kathy, you know what we're talking about? Wait, is, do you guys? 
And when are you, you don't roses, still do that, right? Songs. Where like you would purposely poop and then leave it so the other one would have to see it? Is that what you're talking about? No, no we would not go with me and No, but they did, pee ne- they did go to the bathroom next, pee next no, to each other. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's no, legendary. No, there were weird moments of like my car breaking down and having some mafiosa type pick me up and yeah. drive me into the studio and thing weird. The, weird the guys like tried to beat you up out in front of the studios. <laughs> I used to, um, I used to drag race the Culver City PD yeah. all the time. Yeah. They, they would hang out. They'd be waiting in the parking lot when we're at the old Westwood One. Back when Culver City was just a weird ghost town at night. <laughs> it's true. And they'd be sitting out there, and I'd, I'd get my BMW M3, and they'd get in their cop cruiser, and we'd get to the red light, and they'd throw a couple of revs, and I'd throw a couple of revs, and we'd just go drag racing like through the middle of the night because – Part of the deal. That is so impressed. I, I think no, part, you realize that Chris is trying to get from you a moment when you helped he, yeah, another everyone, human everyone being. Everyone wants a phone call, but it's it wasn't. The it's phone really just call. about you. It's, it's, about, it's, it's about me he, and cars. He's trying to elicit something where you felt good about yourself, helping humanity. So, sorry, Chris. But I do, Chris, I do, I do have one. Nothing. I do I have nothing. one. What happened? Let me. I do have one. There's a couple of things. Number one, uh, I got sober in 2003, and Drew was. Very instrumental in helping that happen, That's and nice. I remain sober to this day. Well done. And then in, in probably 19, and then knowing what a busy guy you were, and we hadn't talked in a while, and I called you, know, like, I think I want to get sober, you immediately jumped to the rescue, and I appreciate it. I will always appreciate that. And number two, just sort of in the spirit of the show, uh, I'm excited that I get to have my own kind of weird story, which is I was guest hosting Loveline, I think, in 1998 or 1999. Adam was out of town. And I, we were at a commercial break, and I said to Drew, hey, Drew, I kind of have this weird skin thing on the underside of my <laughs> testicles, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know what to do about it. And Drew goes, well, I am a doctor. And so during commercial break, we went into the bathroom. Let's have a look. And I, I took my pants down and pinned my balls back yeah. so Drew could go, oh, yeah, that's a skin tag. Guys, just get those. Uh, now. <laughs> Drew. I don't know if that was a, a part of his insidious plan to get me in the bathroom and show him my balls, but I did. He and, does uh, that And he, he put balls. my mind at ease in the middle of this circus of people calling you in know, about their sex problems. Chris, he actually Chris, solved something for me. I want to jump in here because I have a weird small patch of skin on the front of my scrotum sack. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's your called penis. your penis. That's your penis. penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it? That's actually the penis. Oh, I've really? seen that too. Yeah, it's a penis. <laughs> but Chris, I did that so many times with so many guys. I'm sorry. I just can't remember. I, I got, 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 <laughs> got 500 bucks from you for not having <laughs> words. I, I, I apologize, Chris. I know you felt like your balls were special, and now Drew is just acting like, oh, your balls. I can keep, barely keep track. Chris, I got to go. No, I gotta I'm go mad at my balls. I got we God. love your balls. Bye, Chris. Thanks, Chris. We love Thank your balls. You. Thank you, buddy. Adam Kroll is, is our <laughs> the band's back together. Adam Kroll here tonight. Kathy Griffin, stop by. Thank you, Kathy. Emily Moore, Sex. I'll be right back to this. This is Love Line. Uh-oh. This is Love Line. Love Line. It makes sex even better. Better. K-Rock. Broadcast over any FM car radio. Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. K-Rock. Kathy Griffin, this is the final Love Line episode. Reminder, Uber, drive with Uber, completely flexible. You don't have to quit your day job to make more money. Thank you, Anderson. Appreciate it. Uh, extra money does not require a huge amount of commitment, but whenever you need to, just turn on that app and drive. A few hours here, a few hours there, it adds up quickly. It's easy to get started. First, go to drivewithuber.com to sign up for free. Do it right now on your phone. Second, answer a few basic questions about you and your car, and then get approved. Next, start driving. That is it. When you drive with Uber, the pay gets deposited directly every week to your bank account. Start enjoying the flexibility of working when you want, earning extra money on your schedule. Sign up to Drive with Uber today. That is drivewithuber.com. One more time, drive with U-B-E-R.com. Slump line 800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. Adam Corolla, he's got band back together here. We're going to be on podcasts starting immediately Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow. Every day? Every, every day. day. Well, okay. five days a week, to be fair, right? Well, that's yes, like every day fair. in radio. Yes, in radio land. What do you talk about? Yeah. Uh, Adam's grandma. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know you do a lot of podcasts, Adam, but like... No, no, Adam, not up. It's too Ad, nope. Adam's mother. Adam's grandmother. Adam's mother, great. Okay. Adam's father. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. High school football. 
Mm. Uh, junior college football. Mm. Uh, mm. Some sort of house analogies and wood, mm. woodworking. Mm. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Politics. Little yeah. politics. This yeah, little, as it pertains wonderful. to vintage car racing. Vintage yes. cars racing. Vintage car racing. Mm-hmm. Then back to grandma. Yeah, yeah. And then then little, we little, just sort of complete the cycle, cycle back and start yeah. again. Yeah. That's our that's our podcast. Yeah. I just subscribed mm-hmm. in my Actually, brain. Actually, I I think for me, I like uh, we're going to just sort of try to solve problems. And yeah. my plan and the thing I've become more interested in as life moves on is sort of motivation and just how life works. Yeah. And I'm interested in that. And Drew's interested in that. And Drew's interested. That's yeah. <laughs> I think that's why. Drew, you had a few good sayings. Back in the day, like you like the one where it says, no, no, no free lunch, no you had, flesh in nature. Drew you like had that like three, okay, over a course <laughs> of thirty-three <laughs> years. So, so, proud. so he had like one every decade, every eleven years. He came up with one that he, he probably ripped off from somebody, but he knew I didn't read, so right. he, so he could plagiarize. <laughs> Arose by any other name. Wow, Drew, that's so eloquent. You just off the cuff, uh, just started on the top of my head. Claim is my own. Uh, Stitching time saves not. Wow, Drew. <laughs> What happened? Um, yeah, um, he said uh, reality on reality's terms. Yes. I always, I always like that one. Mm-hmm. No free lunches. Yeah, my, my, nature in does not, nature. Yeah, nature, and there's nothing for free. There's a consequence to every whatever. Right. So, but was it that one? Well, we can't remember. It's about it. Uh, a new broom sweeps clean. <laughs> that was yours. I that swear, was yours. I heard that one somewhere yeah, before. Yeah, somewhere. Um, no, Drew. Uh, I can't remember your uh, your your. You, he he'd do like one joke a year, and then he'd have oh. one ism every eleven years. Somebody relived the dime with scale thing with me. Right. That was a funny. That was the funniest joke I think he ever told. That was. Uh, to... Yes. Apparently, it was a, we were measuring a hymen. <laughs> it was like somebody wanted their hymen removed or something. And right. You advise him to bring out a newspaper. Put the date, put to show the date, show the current date on it. Yeah, yeah and then a dime for scale. Yeah, <laughs> his greatest comedic achievement. Ever. <laughs> Thank you. And he wasn't uh, trying to be funny at all. Like he no, was serious. Was he was deadpan serious. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah. No, serious, no, right? no, no well, points. I knew it would be a little funny, but no. yeah. But no, Drew said, um, and and I'm going to paraphrase, but it, you know, it was probably somebody who said this before. This, but Drew, you would you would always say. Um, you're interested in people, you know, some people are interested in themselves and some people are interested in things and uh, you're interested in people pe- that are interesting. Yeah, interesting people. Yeah, or, yeah, in people. What, what but, was that? I think what I was saying was that some people kind of look, they experience themselves by going inward first and then outward. Like they experience their insides and they experience other people. Other experience, other people experience themselves by first experiencing other people and then going in. Right. That makes sense. Well, whatever it was, you're interested in the experience. Yes. And I can't stand when I would run into someone and I'd go, why is this and why is that? And they'd go, I don't know. It just is. Now, leave it alone. Mm-mm. And then they'd want to talk about The Walking Dead. <laughs> I'd be like, this is how you want it. Oh, we're just killing time until we die. Like watching other people's shows and then talking about it, then we'll just die? Or do you want to talk about stuff that motivates people? Speaking of which, uh, you want to give a little plug for your uh, Paul Newman doc? Oh, sure. Yes, we can be interested dead. in things. Yeah. He's dead. Driving dead. We'd appreciate it. But yeah. if it's being into things, that's something you're into. Yeah, winning uh, the racing life of Paul Newman. It's a documentary just about his driving, yeah, his race car pretty, driving. It's a pretty great documentary. Got... I saw that thing. I saw it. It was very, very good. Oh, thank you. It was really good. It actually, I had no, I, I thought I knew Paul Newman before I saw that thing, and I realized afterwards. I'm like, I had no idea who that guy was. Well, that's uh, a nice compliment, and thank you. And when you're uh, making a documentary, that's all you want to hear, yeah. which is, I thought I knew this thing, but I had no idea. I was there, too, and I really liked it, but I snuck in. Is mm. that cool? Because I was yeah, supposed to cool. be on the list, and I wasn't. Mom, Emily, what did you say? Emily, what did you Drew <laughs> had, a, had, had a thimble of red wine, and he's off the I rails. Wait, what did you say that I do what, S? Em, hold on. I just have to cut, because people have no idea. I just have to cut a cuss word that Drew said. It might be, <laughs> my, might be my ever. last stump. But no, I'm a doctor mm. performer, made one film, but I, I really loved it. Mm. I came to the, it was right down from my office, and they were like, you're not on the list. I'm like, I'm going in. But it's okay, because I didn't steal anyone's seat. But I really enjoyed it. I thought uh, it was well done. Thank the you. Interviews, the whole thing. I would like to uh, just sort of explain because you know I always hate the uh, question marks in broadcasting. Yeah, mm. yes. like Anderson's like swear word. Yeah, it was an end bomb. <laughs> Okay, now let's just move on. Now you know what's funny? On. There was a context to it, Adam, and I'll be fair to him. You know what's funny is yes. I do have one M bomb <gasps> in my machine. Guess who said it? Um, well, no, it's, it, let's Tech, Drew. Let him. Um, okay, Lavar Burton. <laughs> 
No, I know, I know Drew did because Drew. No, it's you. Oh, it's me because you. I, Drew, we could get Drew to read lyrics and things like that, like Michelle no, yeah, and Dakely or Cello or something. With, with the do. A on the end. I haven't seen it with oh. the A on the end, but I have you with the R on the end because you were mm-hmm. quoting a caller who had called, but that's how long we've been doing the show. David Allen Gray used to come in here. I'd wait for him to look down or tie his shoe, and I would play you saying that, and he thought that you were saying it in real time. <laughs> That's the world we used to live in with this show. That's how long it's been. Uh, boy, I simpler times. My- <laughs> I miss it, right. My thing was the uh, crank kickers. Yes. I did the crank kickers. Yes, and uh, also we used to, uh, one of the best was when we'd get, like, John Popper in here and we'd jam with him. Oh, yeah, we pretended, we were, shows? we pretended we were playing the instruments. Yeah. You know who some of those guys were? No. Most of those guys are all in Jimmy Kimmel's band. No kidding. Yeah, I think Toshi wow. was the lead guitar player, and then we had Cleto in here playing the saxophone, right. and I can't remember who was playing the bass. But we would always, those guys all came from what what became Jimmy Kimmel Live's band. Wow. Before that, there were friends of Cleto's, who was friends with Jimmy. And a shout out to Jimmy, too, for getting this whole thing started. I, I, Brent, explain that. we got a minute or two. Go ahead. Uh, I they, they were doing a boxing match on uh, Loveline, Kevin and Bean. Uh, they needed boxing trainers. I was working as a boxing trainer. I volunteered. Everyone thinks to coach J- Jimmy. I just volunteered to coach him or Michael the maintenance man or whoever, whomever. It didn't matter. I just showed up. You just and figured I, you'd get on the radio if you could be the instructor. get nearer to radio if uh, you were the yeah, instructor. Yeah, Jimmy wasn't Jimmy back then. He was the sports guy. Yeah. So uh, I ended up getting sort of stuck with Jimmy, but Jimmy got me on to the radio. The Mr. Bertram came of that. You heard Mr. Bertram, and you guys remember that part of the story. Right. So there you go. Phone number is 800-LOVE-191. We have to take a very quick 30-second break for station identification. We'll be right back after this. 6.7 K-Rock QFM and HD. Pasadena, Los Angeles, Orange County. The world famous K-Rock. LA and OC's alternative first. Love line on K-Rock. 1-800-LOVE-191. Rock on. It's Love Line. We are back. We've gotten the band back together. Adam and I are here again sharing the love. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Emily Morris, sex Emily in the house. Just hanging here. out. Hanging Watching out. This greatest uh, Kathy, Kathy Griffin epic. was uh, was delightful yeah. enough to just literally stop by. It's amazing. Thank yeah. You. This was uh, really, uh, again, for me, just listen to the show, was a huge fan of the show, was a huge fan of K-Rock, and uh, the, to actually be in this chair at that time was sort of surreal to me, but... Uh, I mean, so many crazy events have, have transpired since that time. So many folks have come and gone. It's so many bands have come and gone. It's so bizarre. You know, we I, were just I, sitting there year I, after year. I, I found myself thinking about this on the drive in. I think it was the first year and within maybe the first couple of months I was doing the show because I was still living in my old apartment and I was uh, living in Toluca Lake and I was driving a rental car because my car got totaled and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was driving back over the 405, and it's uh, right where, at the point when Bill Cosby's son was basically <sighs> killed by the side of the road. Right. And his Co- Cosby got killed at like 12:15 in the in the a.m. on a weeknight, and I was driving home literally just on Skirball. He was I was on the 405, and he was 100 feet to my right. Wow. And it just I I, I don't know why I found myself thinking about him. On the ride in, because I just thought uh, I was nobody. There was nothing going on. You, you know, like so many places and so many lives and so many things have happened since we've been here, since you've been here, Ugh. for sure. For sure. I mean, oof. Yeah. Think about it. I was here in the early 80s. <laughs> think about that. <laughs> but, you know, the thing uh, The thing I, I will say about uh, Drew, I, I think, uh, never got to his head. No. He was always an a-hole. Yeah. He was always a prima donna. Yeah. He was always a diva. Yeah. And he didn't alter his course at all when no. things really heated up for him. No, because I was already there. Right. Yeah. Right. But now, our next guest, next surprise guest, is uh, someone, Adam, you'll know. I'm not sure if our listeners will know, but he was the program director, music director here, program director for many, many years, Andy Schoen. Hi, Andy. Andy? 
Hey. Hi, Drew. Andy. Hey, Adam. Andy. Hey, Andy. Andy went over to MTV, and he was responsible for bringing us to MTV. That's right. Hey, Thanks. guys. Yeah. I'm so glad to be on the last show. Thanks for the $1,800 I made at <laughs> MTV for four seasons of Loveline. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah, good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. You guys know that. You guys know that. Did you guys tell the story about how the show became a five night a week uh, phenomenon? We did not. No. Tell let's that. Uh, let's hear all about it. Do you want? Do you okay. want to tell it from your perspective? Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Well, so I was the program director of K Rock. I came in in 1989 to the station, and I was being a good program director with a highlighting pen, going over the Arbitron ratings one night. And I was looking at the hour-by-hour hour ratings for Los Angeles, and I found that on Sunday night from 10 to midnight, uh, K-Rock had a rating that was probably 10 times what it had any other time during the week. And I thought, what the, what the heck is that? And it was, <laughs> Do we have a show? Are we on the air then? <laughs> and I thought, okay. And I, I, I checked it out, and I said, oh, that's Love Line. Okay. And I thought, you know, the, the station was, 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 was sort of in trouble. I was trying to pull it back, you know. It had just been purchased by Infinity Broadcasting for the most money ever purchased, uh, you know, for a radio station. So there was a lot of pressure on the, on, on the station, and I thought, you know, you know, you know, you know, what, what can we do to improve the ratings? And I, I'll, I'll tell you something that is a secret I've told very few people, and that is my blueprint for K-Rock was very similar to NBC. I said, if we have the Today Show, the Tonight Show, and the Olympics, then we can be successful. So, so the Today Show was Kevin and Bean, but nobody was listening at the time. The brand <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, the Olympics ultimately became, um, Acoustic Christmas, and the Tonight Show was Loveline. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, uh, right before, you know, coincidentally, right before Thanksgiving, uh, right before uh, Valentine's Day, I went to Trip Reeb, who was our general manager, and I said, I've got a counterintuitive, really crazy idea for the number one music station in the world. Let's do a two hour talk show five nights a week, Love Line. I showed him the ratings, and I said, we'll put a promo on K Rock that says, just in time for, for Valentine's Day, Love Line's on five nights a week. And if people really have a hard time with it and complain, we'll pull it off. But if they don't, we'll leave it on Sunday through Thursday. And that was about 25 years ago. And, and uh, that week, that when Tripp called me in to discuss that was the week Susan, <laughs> my wife, got pregnant with triplets. Mm. That's right. And, uh, I remember. Tri- and Tripp was offering me a fat $50 a show. I, that's right. <laughs> the first I deal. Think you, I think you did it. The, of course the, I did. The first deal because he'd been working for free yeah. up until then. That's yeah, right. that's Trip, a lot of money. Trip threatened in our first negotiation when I was co-hosting the show to make me the highest paid <laughs> part-time employee at K Rock. So I, whatever the van drivers were making, go ahead and add eight percent to that, wow. and that would be my wow. salary. Uh, that's yeah, so funny. Well, you know, my history with you guys didn't end there because about five years ago, five years later, uh, when I went to, you know, I went to MTV shortly after uh, we went to Five Nights a Week. We syndicated the show on Westwood One, and then I went to MTV to be the head of programming there. And in 1997, I got a call from, I think it was Mark Itkin, right? Yeah. Um, Will and yeah. Morris. And he said Stone Stanley was taking the show to Fox, and in the 11th hour, Fox Pulled the plug on it. Oh, that's a whole other story. Reason. Remember that story? The nine, yeah, the nine right? lost episodes. Yeah. 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 Right. So and, and and so Mark called me. I remember I was sitting in my apartment in New York, and he said, he said, would you be interested? I think he said, Drew said, call Andy. He was our old boss at MTV <laughs> or, or at K Rock. He said, he said, call Andy. And 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 I said, oh my God, our ratings are are we were suffering that summer in the ratings, and we needed a program. And I think within two weeks. The show was on MTV, and it became the longest-running uh, daily show um, in MTV history. Wow! So it was, yeah, so that's yeah, so that's so my history with Love Line goes from from uh, from uh, two, you know two hours on Sunday to five nights a week to syndication to then MTV. So. Um, I've been dining out on the story for 25 years. I appreciate it, guys. You know, thank, thank you, you so much. Andy. Thank you for being here. Thank you for telling it. There were so many behind-the-scenes actions that went on that uh, you know we weren't aware of and a lot of people weren't aware of that uh, ended up with the show being where it was. Andy, thanks so much. 
So thank you guys. Right, Drew, thank what you. year Thanks. did you start? And um, I'm going to be working on a documentary about K Rock, yeah. so I'm going to have to get all this from you uh, on camera. But yeah. you started off first day going where? Where, where was the studio? Yeah, 33 years ago in Pasadena, across street from the Hilton. And I'm there somewhere above just a cinder block building, the old K Rock building. Yeah. And you want and they wanted to do uh, ask a surgeon or something that was like sort that. Of their idea that they had. Yeah. And they, you were were you a student at that point? Medical student. Yeah. And that was was it ten years of Sunday nights yep. before the the five day a weeker. Yep. And <laughs> And was there any? Well, maybe it was more like wait, hang on a second, more like eight or nine days, eight or nine years of that. I was think. there yeah. any part of you that had some? And that, I, I know the answer, but everyone always says, you know, with me in podcasting or you and Loveline, how'd you know it was going to work? It's like I never knew. Didn't just, even think about it. Didn't even think about just, it. Just, just showed up. I thought it was right? important to do because no one was talking to young people about what we now call AIDS. No one was right. talking about it. I thought this is important stuff. Someone's going to answer these questions. It was interesting and fun and different. It was one night a week, and if I was on call or something, I wouldn't come. I had to stop for a while. My program director, when I was in residency, freaked no, out. No, not your program call. director. No, no, my, my residency program director oh, right, but freaked out about yeah, it. Yeah, everyone thinks radio when you no, say program No, no, it's my residency director. program director. My, my right. senior doctor who yeah. was in charge of the residency training program I was in flipped out yeah. at one point and made me stop. And uh, then I sort of came back later. I'm always, uh, I always laugh because uh, our program director, Kevin Weatherly, for all these years, is probably the one guy in America that every up-and-coming band would like to get in the room with for five minutes. Yep. And... Nobody, I mean, he was wins program director of the year every year, and they finally yelled at him. He has to keep the Porsche that they give him. Can't just throw it up on eBay. And I, I would always kid that while everyone was trying to get Kevin Weatherly in the room for five minutes, I was the guy who was running past his office holding a ficus plant. So he wouldn't call me in to well, do an air check and tell do, me to roll more phone calls. Right, he would do exactly what every uh, talk show host should be told, which is stop talking. <laughs> it was funny. We, thankfully, you know, I always told uh, everyone the reason you want to be number one is not for the money and it's not for the belt and it's not for the accolades. It's so you don't have to have constant conversations <laughs> about what needs to be fixed. And we were lucky enough or skilled enough to constantly be sort of in that catbird seat where we didn't have to march down the hall and talk to the program director and figure out what needed fixing because we're number 15. But also I, the idea that we would do it in the middle of the night when no one was around, it was always like the parents were out of town. Right. We'd sneak in here. Everything would be dark. I think that added a lot to the uh, atmosphere right. of the whole thing because when you're working and you're doing like the morning show, you know the program director and the GM and all the guys in the corner they're, they're offices are all, on the way they're in. all listening on the way in or they're just sitting in their yeah. office right with the radio on. And if you get out of line, they'll come down the hall and first you know it's basically it's like uh, trying to cheat with the – nanny cam rolling <laughs> and the wife's in the next room you know and the baby monitor's on and uh, she's out by the pool you can't you, you can't function you can still cheat but it's going to throw your rhythm off we've always felt like we're w walking around the middle of the night and no one was home like like no one was listening yeah. either we assumed that well, they were so. listening but, but did you but, guys ever get in trouble though for anything because there was certain things that you were saying that sure. were we really had the regulation remember we had david arquette walk in <laughs> oh it was, the best. it was the best it was the greatest I was asking, I was musing to Drew in, in our intercom system, which is a microphone, <laughs> <laughs> syndicated radio show, how crazy people, like crazy actors at the time, it was David Arquette, how they show up to set, how do they memorize their lines, how do they well, hit I, their marks? To be fair, I think it started with why, the, why are the, the people that everyone acknowledges are the craziest actors always playing the straight cop or something? That's where that conversation no, it got came, going. No, it came from me going, you're nuts. Yes. I get it, yeah. but how do you memorize 80 pages of dialogue <laughs> yes. and then hit your mark? How do you do it when you're clinically insane? And Drew sort of was saying, hey, be careful what you say. You don't want to piss the guy off. And I said, he's insane. What does he know? Well, you said, and you said he's, we all agree he's the nicest guy we ever met, but he's insane. Right. And then Drew said something uh, prophetic. He yeah. said, like, 
you don't want him to come over here and punch you or something. I said, he can't come over here. He's insane. He, he doesn't know where we are. Yeah. And ten seconds later, there was a guy at the door. And it was Rose the door open. It was David no, Arquette come walking no. right in the studio. It didn't take three minutes. Yeah. Screaming. You know why? So I'm crazy, huh? You know, you know where he was? He's going to La- home from the Lakers game, he said. He was going right down the 10 freeway, yeah. home from the Lakers game, yeah. listening in like the back of a limousine. Yeah. And literally told the guy, get off on Robertson. <laughs> I'm right here. Get off right here. Did you know him at all? You never oh, met him. Just, yeah, okay, you were friends with him when he, he came was, in. That's he, amazing. We knew Jay, but he, was, he thought it was funny, <laughs> well, ultimately. Ultimately. <laughs> but it was in the weird. Moment, it was uncomfortable. Who else did we get to come in tonight? I bet the, everyone's listening. So. The other thing was, well, Kathy Griffin just walked that in. That was pretty amazing. The, I guess the other thing was when you were here, what's the girl that played? She was in. No, I got to think of the girl. <laughs> Hang on, who the, she played uh, the roller girl in Boogie Night? Uh, Heather, Graham. Oh, Heather Graham. Heather Graham. Heather Graham was sitting here with two other oh, actors. God. It was a film that went straight to DVD, which was DVD at the time. And it was she was cover- plugging something. She was plugging that something wasn't something else. doing very well. That's right. And right. Adam kicks back, and during the commercial break, you said something effective. It was on the air. Was it on the air? I think so. You'd have to ask Superfan Giovanni, okay. but <laughs> I, I said. Just in a interview, what you when you do when you're interviewing someone and they're talking about this movie that's you know this low budget thing that's going straight to the uh, airlines and you kind of go, oh well, what else you got coming up? What else is? And she goes, well, I'm doing this uh, movie with uh, Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch and Burt Reynolds, fresh off of Cop and a Half, it was like his, in a Meineke commercial, and it's like, and I play Roller Girl. And it's like about the porn industry in the 70s. And I'm like, sweetie, I got to talk to your agent because this is not working out for you. He said, you, you're, he said you're, you're a nice looking woman. You seem like a great actress. You need a new agent. You, gotta talk you need representation. <laughs> like, going well, you're on acting here? with Marky Mark, Burt Reynolds, <laughs> Funky Bunch, and Burt Reynolds with this painted on mustache. And, and my porn, you wear rollerblade? What? what? And yeah. The, the, Boogie <laughs> Night's favorite film of the year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the decade. Maybe, yeah, maybe the so, decade. Uh, there you go. There's right, my take prognosticating. A break. Uh, Emily know. Morris, Emily. Adam and I are together. Band is back. We'll be podcasting starting tomorrow at that. Yeah. Prolo.com, Doctor.com, uh, West uh, Podcast One dot com, sure. right? iTunes, and we'll be right back to this. After that love line, the craziest question. What's the craziest question you've ever gotten on love line? Back with more love line in a bit. This is Loveline. I'm just spilled wine all over everything. Emily's over there. Dr. Drew's over there. A little swan. I really, I really am a lightweight. I switched bikes. Dude, I'm sorry. What would you say? He's a lightweight. lightweight. No, I didn't say you're lightweight. Right, but although I you are it's lightweight. Yeah. But, uh, no, Drew just spilled his red wine all over the console. And then the great news is he had a, a cocktail napkin <laughs> that he was using to jot down people's names who we should thank. And then he used the cocktail napkin to mop up. The it's red wine that he but just spilled. But I think spilled, you got it so. in your brain, Drew. Oh, we'll see. You do. But you I, got I, it. I do think we ought to be saying some thank yous yeah. throughout throughout the show, and uh, I think we ought to thank our wives, yes. Lynette and Susan, for putting up with us leaving every night. My kids, who have never known a, a world in which their dad came home in the middle of the night and didn't leave at nine o'clock. Right. Yeah. yeah. We should thank me for not punching you for you telling me you would be asleep by twelve thirty every night, which drove me nuts. Why? Because you couldn't insane. fall asleep. It drove me insane. No, because. We'd have a lot of these things where it's like, hey, they want you guys to do Jenny Jones. Uh, Remember that one? <laughs> yes, I do. They want you to do Jenny Jones, and so they got to fly out to Chicago, and you're going to do a double D- Decker Jenny Jones episode, <laughs> and the car's going to pick you up at 5:15 a.m. because they got to fly it out at 7:05. Uh, fly out of uh, United. We're going to Chicago. And I'd be like, oh, God, I can't go to bed before, like, 1.30 if I drink enough wine, maybe 2 o'clock. <laughs> and Drew would be like, I'm I'm in bed at 12.30 every night. And I'd go, Drew, we, the show ends at 12.03, and you live 20, Two. 22 minutes from where we are. How are you asleep at 12.30? And you just go. And then the super condescending part of Drew would come out. He'd go, I work really hard during the day. And I'd go, oh, oh. 
<laughs> so if I didn't have so much hammock, if I had so much hammock time, like if I wasn't sipping a mai tai from a hammock all day, I would be exhausted from the expenditure of yeah. energy as well. Just saying, if you didn't oh, have so much, I was doing like the man show and crank you anchors got up and all once that crap. In a while, Please, early in the morning. How, I'm just saying. How dare you? <laughs> that, I was ridiculous. I would get up at six thirty in the morning every day after getting home at one. I know, but so, I, I it's would. It's hard to fall asleep after the, you're on the adrenaline. Yeah, the I would say to all the a holes and go like, just go to bed. Just go to bed when you get home. I'd go. What time do you get home from work? And they go, oh, 6.45, 7. I go, go to bed. And they go, I can't. I go, oh, there you go. Now shut up. <laughs> That's when I got home. That was what? The, a bunch of pussies. That <laughs> was the schedule for many years, which was, uh, I sort of like, but again, as we spoke about in the, before the last break, we just would feel like we'd creep off into the night, go speak our piece, yeah. and then go back home. Yeah, yeah. I want to thank Max Krasny, who's lurking around here. Max yeah. Krasny. I want to thank our representatives, Howard Lapidus, mm-hmm. Bob Eatman. We had John Farrader back then, James yeah. Baby Doll Dixon, all figured large. Even Stone Stanley figured large into the history of the show. Yeah, there were a lot of um, Kevin Wedley. We should be thanking a lot of a lot of folks in the galaxy, just circling the galaxy and, out here. And Anderson. I mean, they've been stalwarts here for how many years. Anderson? How many? It's funny because uh, we had engineer, I saw engineer Mike down there. So Anderson always think of us the new guy who's been <laughs> here for 19 years. Uh, Except- Right. Yeah, hilarious. He's the new guy. Right. So, how many years, Anderson? Uh, two and a half weeks shy of seventeen. And Mike was the first couple of years, right? Mike Dooley, three, three, four, four years, years yeah. four years. So that that was the felt like forever years. Dooley the, got his the, vasectomy during those four years. Remember that? Nice. He brought in his. You guys called him. You called him the one nut wonder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. No, nice. Yeah. Right. And Anne. I mean, since she went here and get take the mic, yeah. it's been a long time. You know, yeah. she make us twenty eight years. She make us. I mean, Anne went through a lot with this show. Is it twenty? I mean, we, was yeah. it was right? Anne producing 26. when it was Sunday nights? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Max, Max says again. yes. Yeah. So longer than, well, you only. Yeah. I mean, so second only to you, all, right? Yeah. So it's. Poor man, Ricky, all the in between ones like uh, Chris Hart was there and Doug the Slug was there. You, Mike, Stryker. Mm hmm. Oh, right. We should be saying thank you to all of them. Mike Maybe Catherine. Th- Mike Catherine, of course. Yeah. Uh, everyone Swedish figured, Eagle. Swedish Eagle at the beginning. Scott yeah. Mason. Scott Before Mason. Even. Space yeah. and Scott Mason. He'll yeah. be missed. He passed recently. Yeah, very I mean, sad. Yeah. yeah Eagle's really, still around. Really good dude. Poor still around. I was listening to uh, Swedish Eagle because I made sure and listened to uh, the Sirius XM 90s channel on the way in just so I could hear some, like, silver chair or something <laughs> that brought me back to yeah. those mid-90s days when all those bands seemed to be just flying flying and, through here. And the, we saw so – they'd, they'd all come through here, right, every single one of them? Every single one, uh, not in the middle, on the way up or on the way out. <laughs> True. <laughs> we didn't see him in Act Two. We'd see him in Act One and then in uh, Act oh, Three. We had somebody else stop by here, who's often a, a, a fixture on this show. Come, <laughs> see, come on, Mike, step to the mic, Mister. Hi, I like ah Andy Dick, everybody. <laughs> I kissed the mic. Hello, how are you? Are you know, the bitches of the century here with you? No, no. This is my girlfriend. Oh. Do, do I get to sit down? Right here, sit. Yeah, have a seat. Where, you where, where, where was Kathy sitting? sitting? She was sitting here. You can sit next to me. Go on, yellow. Dude. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Good to see Andy. Somebody else that has a, a record for number of visits here. Oh, yeah. Andy, you've been on the show 25 times. Easy. Are you guys, like, weirded? Are you? Yeah, I've been on the show It's amazing. I would always be pissed off at Andy because he'd yeah. come on the show, he'd talk about being bi, and then you'd walk out in the lobby and he had the hottest 19-year-old girlfriend <laughs> on the planet. I'm like... How does this buy thing work, and how do I buy into this buy? Like, so it's happening again. You, you, you go buy, you, you, you get to bang nineteen-year-old okay. supermodels. Is that that's how it works? Bye bye. <laughs> no, he was he was doing it right. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Well, I'm still doing it right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. She's oh. right outside. No. Nice. Oh really? Hot. Oh yeah. Hi. There we go. So Sorry, what? I'm what doing uh, it wrong. Did Anne uh, put you up to this or? So, no, Anderson did. Anderson, Anderson did. said, "Call. Why don't you call Anne?" Turn it down. Pot it down, Anderson. It's, that's crazy. <laughs> or, or you hit my... It's you hit, you hit your... Oh, yeah, I hit yours. Oh, sorry, okay, buddy. sorry. That was my little... My little yeah. All right, anyway, who are you banging? <laughs> <laughs> and what is, this ruse? what is this ruse with you where it's like, yeah, I'm kind of into dudes, but there's always a hot 19-year-old blonde you're banging. Yeah, she's it's, right it's, out there. Let's bang. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, you got to show up with, like, a dude once in a while and go, hey, this is Gary. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. He's got a ton of hair on his back. He's a big fella. You know what I mean? We're going at it pretty good. So... That's kind of what I'm into right now. And then you alternate with the hot blonde. But you You're can't right. just keep talking about dudes and then yeah. showing up with the hot blondes no. every time. Yeah. I'm starting to get suspicious. I know, I know. I'm stuck on this one. It's been a year and a half with this And it's been sober for a year and a half. Yeah. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you wow. guys feel weird because I see everybody's drinking? <sighs> yeah. We're not. I mean, Drew spilled his. I'm I having just, I just spilled mine over. <laughs> you guys uh, you're We're so lucky drinkers. that you can drink. No. Yeah. You're so lucky. Yeah, I agree. It's a blessing. <laughs> it's a mitzvah. <laughs> it's a mitzvah. That's what Adam people yeah. call a mitzvah. Hey, yeah. honestly, can I just say... Hold on. Should we, can we get ahead. your girlfriend <laughs> to say hi? Together Adam's with Kathy to to Griffin's boyfriend so we can have like some parody here like and some actual adult. <laughs> and then you can get together with Kathy guy. so we can well, have some appropriate age you know, dating going Kathy on. Kathy and I kissed once. <gasps> we really? kissed. We went on a date. She took me out to Luke. On Melrose. She took you out. That's your favorite place? My favorite place. Yeah. She wanted to go out. I said, well, let's go to Luke. And she's, we, we, we ate dinner. We had a nice conversation. And at the end, she said, you know, this is a proper date. And I expect a kiss. Ah. Oh. So I <laughs> had to kiss her. <laughs> Wow, I'm I'm sure well, she's beaming. Right, 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 right. Andy, yeah. is that the gayest thing you've ever done? <laughs> I, was, yeah, I, just said. I was just no, no. I enjoyed it. She's I was nice. just spooning with Kathy. How dare you? <gasps> mm-hmm. I love her. How's how, she doing? I'm great. so sad. I missed her. Okay, yeah. good. How old? Yeah. <laughs> my girlfriend. Adam wants your girlfriend back in. How old is she? I know Kathy's like banging a picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> That's how she stays young. Now, my girlfriend's 22, but she's. <laughs> Shut now up. let's hear the she part does where she has an incredible spirit. She anything. has incredible sense of humor. She's wise beyond her years. Well, she is. Yeah, she's well, never heard of Led Zeppelin, no, but no, she, we, she makes me laugh. What, what, what no, by all the on. stuff she doesn't know? No, she's but, hot as hell. Okay, whoa, the end. The whoa, end. Yes, the end. Period. The end. We gotta take a break. It's Love Live. Be right back. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. No one else can find the trouble so quickly or repair it so economically. Bloodline is coming back. Bloodline on K Rock. Broadcast over any FM car radio. Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. K Rock. Bloodline on K Rock. This could develop into a nasty habit. Dr. Drew Pinsky is with us again. He's a specialist in addiction medicine. Andy, you're going to be here at the very end. <laughs> yeah, I Andy, just swallowed the wrong if you survive. Let's make Kathy Griffin's water. Andy was, she didn't drink much of it. Andy said, you know, every year they cool. do the Sound of Music at the Hollywood yes, Bowl. You yes. should show up and bring the fellas. And yes. then uh, last minute, he said, I got to bang a hot blonde. So uh, you go on ahead. I thought, I'll be there next year. I'll be there next year. So it was just me and a bunch of guys in later house and, you know, singing along. And, and uh, on top of some mob. And, and McFarland, he would show up over here. So the farther goes. Yes, yeah, yeah, but not Andy. No, not no. Andy. He's busy. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. at luck. He's at luck with his uh, mm-hmm. latest. Can I be serious for just mm-hmm. half a second? Mm-hmm. This show means a lot to me. This show, the cast of the first show I was ever on was on this show. Remember when the Ben Stiller show cast? It was Janine Garofalo, yep. Bob Odenkirk, me, ben Stiller. ben Stiller, and Judd Apatow. Yep. And we were all in. Crowded us in, and I think that in was Burbank. back in the day in Burbank. But, yeah, in with, Burbank. Wasn't it poor man? Yeah. Did you guys talk about him? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> Is he dead? No, he's still around. Oh. <laughs> but that, and, and then that was twenty some years ago. Yeah. And then it's crazy. And then I love the show because you, the, the the team, especially this team right here. It, it's you, pointing at Anderson and, <laughs> and, and Anderson's penis. <laughs> no. You, you guys, it, it, do you know how many people need this show because their parents don't talk a, about mm-hmm. sex to them? I didn't have, I wouldn't be the way I am if I had some guidance. You would be with a 19-year-old? Some, probably check, not. Check, right, because of them. That's awesome. That's really yeah, good to look like to I'm mentally, learn. something's wrong with me. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I never had, I was, I didn't have we, any we, we advice We would get that a lot, and uh, I think 
Drew and I had the same mindset, which we would always just shrug it off and sort of keep walking through the airport of life, which was <laughs> like, it, um, that's fantastic. But uh, it it never, I don't know, Drew, did you ever internalize no, these things? You no, didn't have people no. would come up and go, you've changed my life. I used to listen to you when I was 14. I was on this really bad path, but your words made a huge difference in my life. And because uh, Drew is dead inside... <laughs> And uh, I'm 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 hollow. We just go like thank you, and we just keep walking, not in a condescending way, but it never felt like it like it never felt like anything, right? It felt good, but it not felt that like good. <laughs> well, I no, think I mean, that, listen, here's what, what felt not as good. good as it should have felt. One performer told me that if he he used to listen to the show in Seattle, and if he ever was able to get on the show, he would have concluded that he his his career had made it. Yeah. And some eight years ago. This performer made it onto Loveline. Identify yourself. Uh, yeah, it's me, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Joel McHale. Uh, that, was, uh, that was more than eight years ago. That was uh, eleven years. That ago. That was when he peaked. That was the peak of his career, right there, eleven yeah. years ago, being on this show. And you had left, I think, already by then. It must have been the second I left. Yeah. If it was Is eleven right? years ago, it was almost the second you left, and I, I basically filled in as a co-host. Which was disappointing because I had never met Adam in my life. But being on the show, I was still like, all right, I'm on this show. I but I'm glad I could be a disappointment for you. Thanks, Joel. Well, Dr. Drew, <laughs> listen. It, it, the, it, 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 even though every time I see Adam, I insult him to his face and uh, behind his back, I still was like, that, that was why I loved the show because uh, it was obviously a great sex and emotional advice show, but it made me laugh out loud to the point where I'd steer my car off the road. <laughs> and uh, so for me, because uh, I'm a selfish uh, person, uh, it was a comedy show. In a weird way, it was a comedy show first before it was ever uh, an advice show, even though it was a, one of the, it was the best advice show of all time. Uh, I always looked at it as a comedy show, and I and I got to the point where uh, I would listen to it so much that my wife would go, "Are you going to listen to it tonight too?" And, and I was like, <laughs> I, I looked forward to it like uh, like Roosevelt's fireside chats. And uh, uh, let me tell Andy Dick girlfriend who Roosevelt is <laughs> and, and actually what a fire and a fireplace is. She's yeah. used to just, wood, wood, bird wood in a yeah, fireplace. She's used to oh, seeing okay. like a 60 inch plasma. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. So she was four and a half at this time. But uh, Joe, I, my, uh, my thought is always that the, the reason we were able to do this show is because we didn't pay much attention to what we were saying or the impact we we're having or anyone listening. I think if you do anything where you think someone else is listening, it becomes stifling at some point. Yes. And uh, we wouldn't. We would pretend like nobody's listening, and occasionally someone from the Asian community would be listening. We get into trouble, <laughs> or from Hawaii. <laughs> but uh... thank you. Yeah, well, as you know, I am ninety-five um, percent Korean, so uh, it did it did resonate with me. Well, being six four was kind of a tell, but yes, <laughs> yeah, I suspected five percent. <laughs> All right, but you know, you're, but you're absolutely right. You, uh, you guys, the, the fact that you guys kind of felt like you, you weren't, you, it wasn't like your parents were talking to you. It was like your friends were talking to you, and they were giving you crap at the same time. They were giving you advice. It, it somehow was the the buffer that allowed you to hear the truth that you guys were always saying while at the same time laughing and well that is well, we always yeah, we always well that out. the show yeah. i uh the only analogy i ever made that drew ever liked was uh how we would always describe the show is your dog is sick it needs it's got worms you need it to take a pill but if you hand it the pill it just spits it out on the floor so you take the pill you mash it into a little hamburger meat and your dog laps it up and drew was the pill and i was the hamburger happily meat. Happily, happily yep danny agrees yep yeah, on the bill that's mm -hmm. perfect yeah. this is why america is great and the youth <laughs> are our dogs that spit well, things out and back if you want to tell what i was sort of uh know how long we've been around we used to say gainsburger but no one would know what that is I used anymore. to say Gainsburger, yeah. right? But nobody knows what Gainsburger is. Well, Joel, hold Listen. on. Andy, Andy Dick's girlfriend just gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> she I mean, knew, she, she knows, knows what it is. It's a, Somehow, uh, some kind of throwback tweet. She's on YouTube. She's on YouTube.
Sean Old commercial. Yeah. Uh, all right, Joel. We really appreciate you and calling. And he's getting in. dirty texts from Kathy Griffin. I just want to share. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Well, she's well, listening. You guys, you have, you, I oh, know sorry, that I, I now that you, it's stupid the show's over, but you, uh, the impact you've made on America, uh, you guys have no. I, I really believe you guys have made a serious impact on America for a uh, actual advice that young people need to hear that parents are too afraid to tell their kids or are too ignorant to know and b comedy and uh it, it it is it made you guys made so many people laugh for so many years and i don't i know dr drew you probably don't think you're funny uh yeah i well, Adam's made sure he, i he don't think i'm funny <laughs> forget about him but there's you guys were the laurel and hardy of don't get syphilis <laughs> <laughs> But thanks, Joel. Oh, Appreciate good. it. Thanks, thanks Joel. Part of it. Listen, Adam, I'm doing podcasts to so stop by the Corolla Empire and uh, jump, jump in on us, yeah. okay? Or drop off a Tesla, whatever you want to do. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right, Joel, but, thanks. Uh, yeah, America misses you. All right, buddy, thanks. Already. Joel McHale, everybody, the great Joel McHale. Let's uh, take a little break and head on to the very final uh, mm. segment of Love Life. Want to hear what Kathy said? Kathy Griffin, they're, Kathy they're sexting, Griffin so. is listening. Yes. And mm-hmm. she said, first of all, Andy, we did not just kiss that night after Luke's. I finger banged you and you loved it. Love, <laughs> Kathy. True or not true? No, she did not yeah, finger bang me. But Emily, one I can't wait to met. do your show. <laughs> <laughs> you right, little the finger bang thing. Right Vixen. back for the last episode, the last segment of Love Line. Love Line. Be right back. Switch on, press talk button, and you broadcast. No wires needed. Get voices travel back and forth. It's our very last segment. Uh, I'll leave quickly, Adam, go on to someone you know well, our super fan, Giovanni. Super fan, Gio. Hey, guys. How you doing? Welcome to the show, Giovanni. buddy. Giovanni. Yeah, G- Gio <laughs> keeps... Hold on. Hold on. Guys, <laughs> digs everything up, tells me stuff that I did that I have no recollection of. Here yeah. it is. This is the first time caller. This is the conclusion of this chapter, my friend. I know. It, uh, everybody's got to grow up now. Well, <laughs> you, you do. Adam always he, Gio said that uh, you and I were his parents. Well, you yeah. know, I, I, you guys, you guys me. I was the dad. I, I was thinking about. No, 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 no Drew. <laughs> I was thinking about this. Um, that you know, this show. It, it, you know, we go, oh, well, the show's over. The show's over. Everything's over. So it's not over because you have memories of all the years and all the decades and the 33 years. Drew was here and the 10 plus I was here. We've got recordings. And you have recordings. <laughs> and I thought, well, all right, but that's kind of a corny sentiment. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. What about a movie that you really enjoy or enjoyed? They only made one of those, but you think about still, it, yeah. you go back and you relive it, and sometimes you pop it in and you watch it around the holidays. I watched Trains, Planes, and Automobiles with my kids and enjoyed it last Christmas, and that was 90 minutes. We have hundreds of thousands of hours 2, of that. 2,315 episodes, some of which have been listened to by thousands of people, hundreds of times, dozens of times. There are people... You'll, you brother fans of yours that have heard individual episodes of your radio show more than anybody's comedy album has been replayed. In but, and, and, but get us, and you can get us at adamanddrdrewshow.com or at iTunes. Subscribe there. I forgot to thank Norm Pattis. That's somebody else. Yeah. One of the many people I will have forgotten to, to thank. It's funny. Uh, I work with him now, and I used to call it Westwood 2 because <laughs> I refused to call it Westwood 1, and I used to call it Westwood None. Mm-hmm. As well. The fans still persist in that, by the way. Everybody's kind of taking that cue for years. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the God's honest is just like a family member, and th- this family member is going to uh, rise from the ashes. But those stories, if you've ever been to a, a you know awake, everyone sits around and talks about the stories, where they were, when they were, how old they were, the the, the information, the the wisdom, the knowledge that was passed on. Th- those things are very much alive. It's it's not like well now now that Nana's dead, it's all gone now. Uh, it no vanishes. one takes a shot back and removes the <laughs> wisdom that Doctor <laughs> Drew injected into you in 1998 or 1995 or 2005. It's it's still within you. It's it's in your DNA. It's in your muscle fiber. So this sort of notion of like, 
oh, it's, it's all going away and it'll never be. It, it'll never go away as long as you experienced it. Yeah, I agree. As long as there's an Internet and you can find the old recordings. You'll never take the memory away of Adam lighting his farts and almost lighting his pants on fire from True September 28th. True, it was by that. <laughs> my oh, yeah. Yeah. he ran for the light switch. At first he hated it, and you told him by the third time you did it, he'd be running for the light switch. You're not paying attention to calls. You're not doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like screaming, like, it's blue, it's blue. But, you know, my, you know, what I'm saying is, is you, you may go to the Internet and relive it if you like, or you can just sit in your car, drive to your destination, and think about it. Like you think about Nana and smile. Until you get Alzheimer's like Nana. That's right. And now it's time to go back and listen. Well, Gio, thanks for all the support, and uh, we will. Yeah, we'll... I, I want to thank all you guys. Did you guys mention uh, the Scott Mason, all the people who were like, you know, started this and all that? Yeah, we mentioned uh, Space and Scott Mason, who passed. I was going to say, like, say Space, I'm you Space or not. Yeah, he did a huge part of the show, and then, of course, you know, Portman, all the rest of the guys. But producer Anne. She is. Well, let's get her on the horn. Yeah, we want to get her on the horn here. She, uh, been she's been here 26 years. And this 20, is, 26, 28? This has been her baby. She's, <laughs> you tell me 28. Yeah, it's been a while. Oh, yeah. honey. Wow, this is really, this is really tough. Because it's been, it's really been my entire adult life. That right. I've worked every night with Drew, spent so much time with Adam. Well, that's the whole thing, too. It's like, I didn't have kids. I was single. You didn't have kids. Yeah. You were single. Like, everyone's married. Everyone's kids. My prostate's the size of a basketball. I don't have <laughs> a prostate anymore. <laughs> your kids' prostates are enlarged. <laughs> My prostate you, got taken out. You gave one of your kids your prostate. <laughs> yes. Uh, and now it's enlarged. Right. Like, it's it's this crazy, such such a, a, a period of time that not only have people's you know, tastes have changed, but their lives are completely yeah, different. Absolutely. And you don't realize it when you're sitting in this room every night, you don't realize the amount of people that you reach also, until just the outpouring yeah. that we've and got. I, think with the, I, I had an entire medical career. You know, my, I was, I hadn't graduated medical school yet when I started this. When, I mean, my entire professional career yeah, this band. What's that? What are you laughing about? I'm laughing because I did Kevin and Bean this morning. Yeah, and they actually bought into this premise where I said, you know, I'm outraged that they're pulling the plug on the show. And, you know, Drew's done it for 33 years, but he's still got more in him. And the notion that just because the guy goes on a racially laced tirade <laughs> on this on at the Laugh Factory, completely out of context, by the way, I was there, and the DUI and the subsequent uh, spousal abuse charges charges again. No. Nothing just accusations. That you would just go ahead and pull Allegedly. the plug and Allegedly. ruin 33 years of a broadcasting career. Well, that sickens me. <laughs> they bought into it <laughs> momentarily. Oh, my God. Uh, no, Drew would never. Uh, yeah, so, Anne, sorry. This is your time, Anne. This is your show. 20, 26 years. I was, you know what, Anne, yeah, no, that, that was time. so perfect because that's how it is. Yeah, but you're you're the best. So, you know, it's been wonderful. And, and it's been, we only have just the... Your the, family our, to me. So. Yeah, to you too, and our hearts are and full and I I'm... I'm kind of glad we're ending sort of with on top in a weird way. I mean, it's like it's not like we're being drummed out. Oh, we're, we're, by no means. We're yeah. yeah, we're we're doing very well. So. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. That's I mean, it's, it's nice. It's nice to go out with some terms in terms of you're, yeah, everyone is relatively young, relatively vibrant. Yeah. Beside the prostate, Side Drew moves like a cat <laughs> and <laughs> humps like a squirrel. And believe me, you, you should see him. And and we're going to go on and do work, and I'm doing work, and Anne's going to do work, and Emily's going to do work. Emily goes on. Yeah, Emily's going to do work, and yes. it's not one of these things where, you know, well, everyone's sort of aged out and it's got to go on to Shady Acres and uh, get on, you know, with the, you know, the last chapter in their life. Uh, there shall be more. I mean, look, the last time I left this show, there wasn't even podcasting. Yeah. yeah which is bizarre. Yeah. Like, yeah. podcasting didn't exist when I left for the first time. I like the notion of the last time I left this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Liz Taylor over here. Okay, Richard Burton. <laughs> One last try. I know it's going to work this time. But no, that's that's the whole point. Like, it's it, it shouldn't, you know, it might be sad to a lot of people, but it should overall have a feeling of joy because yeah. of, of what we're able to accomplish and, and what you guys meant to the show as well. Let's turn, turn it to Ann for the closing thoughts. Anything? Well, I'll speak for Ann when I say <laughs> it. 
I prepared a, <laughs> no, a statement for Anne. No, that's too much pressure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, it's been, yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> it's been amazing. Adam, <laughs> Listen. Adam wrote your speech. Yes. Uh, Adam wants to say. Go ahead. No, I, I, I always get back to the fact that we everyone was doing what they did because that's what they wanted to do. There wasn't a bunch of contract negotiations. Nobody needed to have a parking you know, space with their name on it. Right. There was no egos and no Certainly hierarchy. With junior producer Lauren on hand to tell you that uh, <laughs> your, your greatness was measured by who you knew and right. We, we, how, we how worked you knew. out of a we worked out of a studio that was the size of a, a mop closet that never had air conditioning that worked where they wouldn't buy us chairs or headphones. Like it was a. Uh, but I think everyone did it because they wanted to do it. Right. I mean, you weren't getting rich. No. I'm guessing. No. <laughs> uh, I had three day jobs. Drew had four day jobs. I, I think everyone, you know, from, from the phone screeners that were getting, you know, minimum wage to answer phones two hours a night to everyone under the roof, everyone came in every night. You guys at nine, me at uh, nine fifty eight and a half. Yeah. <laughs> but we all just came in because that's where we wanted to be. And, that, and, that day, and right? Again, I, I, if, I, I'm grateful to the callers. I'm grateful to the listeners. I'm grateful that uh, we had the chance to make a difference for people. And I'm grateful for every every single person that participated in the show. The guest, Andy, is still sitting here even now. <laughs> he's just a part of the, the end of this. Yeah, uh, the, he's the he's banging a 16-year-old right now. Mm-hmm. There he is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if I've forgotten to thank anybody, uh, it's not out of lack of gratitude. Uh, it's, Anderson. It's, I, I said Anderson. Oh, I, I said Anne. I think I said everybody that... Valerie Allen, who would I miss? Mike Carano, who am I missing? Krista is in there, right? Krista. Forgot Krista. But Adam doesn't even know the Krista years. Yeah. Who, else, who else am I missing? Christine Fong. Yeah. Did you say Jesus? I said Jesus. I said my wife. I said my kids. You know, there's we're we're grateful for everybody that's allowed it, put us in position where we could do all this over all these years. Yeah. Everyone. It, no, it was it was a great sort of luxury which is you guys listened and kept us at a, at a very high ranking and then we just came in here and pretended like we were doing some sort of junior college radio show <laughs> that was going out to three cars in the parking mm-hmm. lot like i didn't we would get calls remember this we'd get calls all the time and then we'd go well where are you calling from and they go i'm calling from uh, I'm calling from uh, windsor and i'm uh, right across from uh, michigan or something detroit and i'd go we're on in Michigan. <laughs> and you go, yeah, you've been on for four years yeah, in Michigan, and yeah. we go. I oh, okay, well, there good. you go. I'll yeah, take your word that? for it. Like we never discussed, you know, ratings or where where yeah. or affiliates or we anything. We got to wrap it up. I want you wow. to say the farewell that we've uh, done it so many wow. times before. Here it goes. Well, uh, once again, and for the final time, thank you and. Mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on Love Line are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or the station. Love Line is produced by Ann Ingold. Engineered by Anderson Cowan. Love Line. Game over, man. It's game over. The ending just felt flat. I do believe that is the end. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> KROQ FM and HD. Pasadena, Los Angeles, Orange County. I say the future is ours! The world famous KROQ. LA and OC's alternative. First.